Pior Ouais, cool. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Est-ce que vous m'entendez partout Oui Non Ok. Euh... Ah, merci. Bon. Merci beaucoup de d'être ici ce soir. Uh, thank you very much for being, to be, being here tonight. Um, I want to talk tonight about chatbots. So, who is interested in chatbots in the room? Ah, that's not bad. Who is working on chatbots or has been working on chatbots? Cool. Okay, so I hope that after this uh, presentation, many more of you will be doing, uh, doing chatbots. Um, So it's not going to be really deep into Python. Uh, the main value of Raza is that it's in Python and it allows to do uh, everything in Python for chatbots. Let me just introduce you uh, Raza uh, in a few words. So it's a Berlin-based startup. They do open source conver conversational software. Their first product, uh, Raza NLU, was released uh, last year. They have a strong uh, adoption from the community. Their software is used in production by many big enterprises. They have a, a premium feature for the enterprise, but you don't really need them uh, unless you are a very big company uh, scaling your uh, deployment. And of course, it's, uh, it's uh, written in, pith in Python. And an important point is that Raza is designed to run in production. So it's not a research framework. It's not to write to do research projects. It's uh, made to apply as much as AI or machine learning as it can to be able to run in production, um, to be able to run in production. <coughs> Just a word about me. I'm Nathan. Um, I'm also the organizer of uh, Chatbots MTL, the meetup in Montreal. So please uh, come see us. I do chatbots for a living, um, mostly with Raza. And uh, I try to promote the use of the Raza open source uh, in the tech community. So that's why I'm here tonight. So for those who are not used to uh, working with chatbots, let's first describe um, how a chatbot works. Okay? I'll assume that you, under you all know what a chatbot is. Yeah, so it's a robot that, that speaks with you. It answers questions, uh, it does things, and it reacts to uh, natural language. So in the future, uh, a chatbot should look like that. So you would have some neural net uh, that would learn from real past conversations. For example, you would give him the holy story of uh, customer support conversations. And after that, the user would interact with it, and it would uh, interpret, reason, and generate answers. So it would answer simple questions like, how many gigabytes of RAM do I have on my computer? Put it eight. Or uh, it would disambiguate uh, if clarifications are needed. So if I say, uh, well, my computer doesn't work. Uh, is it on? Yes. Can you look at the window if the buildings, uh, if there are electricity in other buildings? Yes, etc. So, but today it's not like that. Today, what work is task-oriented chatbots. So chatbots that are designed to do very simple things or narrow things. For example, book a restaurant, book flights, or an HR bot that would answer questions like how many, how many. Um, a vacation day do I have left? Or um, uh, I was sick on Friday, uh, what's the form I have to fill? Or um, I need to buy a laptop for my department, what's the procurement code I have to use? So these kind of things. And <coughs> so a chatbot has uh, several pieces. Um, let's take the example of uh, banking assistance. So a simple app that uh, can tell you your balance and, uh, and uh, you can make a uh, transfer with. So you would say how much on my checking account? The first component, which is called NLU for Natural Language Understanding, 
would transform uh, an unstructured sentence, so what I said, into uh, a structured content that a, com that, that a computer program can understand. So here it would be uh, balance uh, on the checking account. Then, um, a state tracker would keep track of the conversation history and store the data. For example, maybe earlier I said, hi, I'm Nathan, so um, the, there would be a variable called first name with my first name in it. And the dialogue engine will decide what to do next. Probably in that case, a good idea would be to, uh, to reply with the current balance of the, on, on the account. Okay. So, usually, um, how these projects are done today, so you have many no coding required platforms that you can use, but uh, if you go to coding way, usually what happens is for the NLU, people use a SaaS. Uh, it can be uh, Facebook's Wid.ai, um, Google's Dialogflow, or Microsoft Lewis. And for the Dialog Engine and State Tracker, they would use uh, an open source uh, toolkit such as Botkit, Claudia, or Botpress, which are all in uh, Node.js. That's the most common, I think, the most popular. And what they do is mostly they offer connectors to chat platforms. So uh, they interoperate with uh, Facebook Messenger, Slack, uh, Twilio, etc. And they provide a simple uh, programming interface with methods like say, ask, reply, so you can easily program your conversation. But for the rest, it's still if and else's. Uh, so if the user asks if the intent is check balance, then send the balance. Else, uh, else if the intent is a transfer, then blah, blah, blah. So that's how it works. So since uh, Raza is in Python, and as you know, Python is uh, the preferred, one of the preferred languages for uh, machine learning implementations, you can guess that using a framework in Python will give you access to uh, many other things. And two of them will be to become independent of all uh, those companies and services. And another uh, benefit will be to uh, handle the conversation in a more human and natural way. Because as we will see, um, we humans, uh, we don't think in branches. <coughs> so they have two products, NLU and Core. So let's dig into the NLU first. What is NLU? NLU stands for Natural Language Understanding, and it transforms unstru unstructured data such as text uh, to structured data that a computer can understand or a program can understand. So, for example, from the left uh, utterance, the um, NLU would understand the intent is transfer. The entities are first the amount of money, 200, the source account, savings, and the destiny account checking. How does it do that? Well, you train it. You train it with example. So that's the training format uh, of Raza. It's, uh, it's, it's a markdown file. So the header is the name of the intent, check balance, and then you give him a few examples. In blue, you have the syntax for entities. So um, how much do I have on my savings? Then um, savings is the entity value for the entity source account. And of course, here you have uh, very few examples, but it's going to work, uh, it's going to start working very well with uh, 20, 40, or 50 examples. It does, you, don't, you don't have to, you don't need uh, thousands of examples to have good results. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Okay? So, services such as uh, API.ai, WID.ai, they have uh, web interfaces to do that. Uh, Raza offers you uh, a simple file format. I think for us uh, developers, it's much easier to write and read. 
Okay. So yes, Raza is just an open source alternative to those products. So the question is, is it better? Not really. It's not better, but it's not worse either. Uh, it's benchmarks show they're all in the same range. So I've put, uh, I guess I'll give you the link to the presentations. If you want, you can read the, the benchmarks. But the story is basically that one of the benchmark will put uh, Raza and Lewis uh, above the other, but marginally above. And the other will put, will put uh, API.ai marginally above. So I think it's highly dependent on the training data that you're using for the benchmark. But the, the point here is it works well, and it works as well as the other frameworks. But that's not all. So why, you, why should we use an open source uh, software? So why install and manage software when you could, uh, when you could ju just use an API for free or almost for free? First reason is latency. You can save an API call at every user interaction, so it's about one second every time a user says a message. So on a conversation, it can, uh, it can count. For some uh, industries, um, calling an API at, at each message doesn't, just doesn't work. Uh, some industries, such as banking, finance, health, government, they just need to have data contained uh, on infrastructure. So that's uh, a reason why um, Raza is used uh, a lot in the banking industry, for example. And sustainability, free services come and go. Uh, I don't know if you remember Parse from Facebook. So, uh, it was, uh, yeah, so it was a service that many mobile app developers were relying on. And they just pulled the plug at some point. And even in, in the bot uh, ecosystem, with stories, which, was, which is the conversation manager for, uh, from Facebook, and init.ai, which was a very promising uh, bot platform, um, similar in some aspects to what Raza does, um, they are uh, discontinued. For uh, init.ai init uh, got acquired by Apple, and they closed the service. So at least with open source software, you know that the version you have will always last. But again, that's not the whole story. So what's the whole story? The whole story is that not everybody wants to build a restaurant uh, booking bot. Uh, not everybody writes clear sentences. So let's have a look at those two examples. Okay. So uh, left first, need to book a flight to Shikutimi. Yeah, so people write like that, especially when they text. So forget about the NIDA that could be uh, Maybe it, it's going to work with other, other systems, but look at BK and the plain uh, icon or uh, Unicode uh, string. And it's frequent. For example, if you, start, if you start typing pizza on your mobile phone, you will have a pizza uh, icon that will show up. So more and more, those, uh, <coughs> those uh, emojis get uh, used in text. So as a chatbot developers, we need to handle them. So, BK could be, could be book for us, but it could be back, it could be bike, it could be break, it could be many things. So that's why it's probably not going to be uh, handled well in a generic framework such as API.ai or WID.ai because they're building one model for all use cases. While we are uh, building our chatbot and we would like to adapt the vocabulary to the specific needs of uh, our user with their own vocabulary. So if we need, if we are building a, yeah, a flight booking uh, uh, assistant for uh, teenagers, let's say, um, then uh, then we need to be able to account for those uh, new words. Another example is so here we don't have new words, but we have words that are applied in a very um, specific context. Uh, for example, here go short on EFX, probably. Uh, trading bot. Here, go short means something like sell. Well, not really, but it's not a trading meetup. But that's the go short uh, is, has a specific meaning that, um, uh, uh, that 
need to be taken into account when all the sentences will be grouped together to, f to uh, make intent classification. So how do we deal with that? Let me explain you briefly um, how uh, intent classification works. The idea is to group sentences with uh, similar meanings. If I say I want to book a restaurant or I need a table, I'm saying the same thing even if none of the words are the same. Okay? But I want the chatbot to understand that I'm meaning the same thing. So if, I don't know if you're familiar with word vectors. It's, uh, it's a technique used uh, in machine learning to uh, find, to def <coughs> uh, it's a way to attach a similar, uh, a, a semantic meaning to a word. So a vector is a list of number, but since, if, since it's, a, it's a vector, it has a spatial representation. And the idea is, for example, take this example, house is similar to apartment because the vector house and the vector apartment are close to each other in this vectorial space. Okay, so the word vectors will place word, words in a vectorial space, and words that are similar to each other will be grouped together, will be grouped together. so you will know, uh, you will be able to define the meaning of a word by the words that are similar to them. And for a sentence, well, you can take the average of word vectors. It's a common way of doing. It, work, it works uh, reasonably well, except, of course, when you have uh, negations or particular grammar constructs. But that's, that's how it works. So if you take a, the example uh, I gave earlier, so I need to book a table and I want a reservation in a restaurant, um, which means the same thing, the chatbot will understand that, well, the NLU will understand that those sentences are similar because it will look at the vectors and see that the vectors of those sentences are close to each other. So that, more or less, how it works. On the right, it's just uh, as an illustration, I wanted to show, um, <coughs> I wanted to show uh, a projections of vectors on two dimensions. And you can see, for example, that here, uh, all the numbers are grouped together for a million, seven, three. Um, here you have, uh, yeah, I cannot read anymore. But uh, <laughs> yeah, here you have um, words like a, n, another, each, you know. So you can find clusters in the, in, in, in the, in the vectors uh, that put works with uh, similar meanings together. So back to our examples. What, what can you do with, uh, with our examples? Well, it's, it's, it's very simple, actually. All you have to do is uh, redefine or define the words that you want to understand the way you need to understand them. So you would say, OK, the vector for BK is the same vector as book. So when the chatbot, well, the NLU will read BK, it will understand book. Exactly as you say to your kid, uh, well, you know, uh, book means reservation. Uh, a booking means a reservation. And then he's going to associate it and you understand that the both words are, have the same meaning. So that's something you can do when you control uh, your software and when you can go under the hood. And that's uh, one of the big benefits of using open source software. Uh, for your uh, natural language understanding problems. Uh, well, so the NLU stack. So you have your training data. Uh, um, Raza comes uh, with a spacey as a dependency. Uh, for those who know it, spacey will use the vect will come with vectors that will be used for the featureization. Um, Raza um, has also uh, scikit-learn in its dependencies, and using the, the features, it will train a model for intents and a model for entities. Okay, so that was for the sake of completeness. 
Any question on NLU? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, um, yeah. um, vectors are trained. It goes beyond the scope of this talk because it's a, it's it's a topic. Uh, it's a it's a huge topic. But the idea is that vectors are trained on huge uh, uh, corpus uh, corp corpus of text such as Wikipedia. So, for example, you read the whole Wikipedia, and they will map. Um, they will find words with uh, similar neighboring words, and that's how they understand that the the words are similar. If you want, I can, we can discuss that later because it's, it's going to be a very long answer. Um, so the vectors, uh, yeah, good question. So the, the vectors are provided uh, in, in Spacey. Spacey is a lower level NLP library. So you have vectors in French, uh, English, Spanish, and a few languages. Yeah, but my question is related to that. So, what does every dimension of the vector represent? Maybe it's not a scope. Uh, well, it, it doesn't have a, a, a meaning per se. It's just used to put the, the, the vectors uh, close together in the space. So, you just know that if they are close together, they mean they have a similar, similar meaning. You can interpret the numbers uh, independently. No. You got it? What sort of metric do you use for in order to interpret your vector space? Is it Cartesian or is it just let's jump into the second product. I have eight minutes. <coughs> so let me explain the problem with dialogue management. I'm going to go with a simple example. Um, so I'm saying to my chatbot, I want to send $200 to Jack. And next, the chatbot is going to decide whether he has all the information he needs to proceed with the payment. And he doesn't because he needs a source account. So he's going to ask me, OK, from which account? Then he expects, of course, something like savings or checking. But I'm a human. So if you ask a, question, a human a question, he's going to answer with another question. OK, how much do I have on my checking account? And then it's going to crash and burn. It's going to say to me, I don't understand what you mean. Please tell me from which account you want. OK? But that's not how we want to handle this. We want the chatbot to be, it's a simple question. How much do I have on my account? Especially when I have to decide from which account I have to make a payment. So ideally, I would like the bot to be able to answer that question and then go back to the flow. Now. I'm in, that, I'm in that branch. So do you confirm you want to pay $200 to Jack? And then, well, you know what? I'm just going to give him 150 <laughs> And same thing here. No. Uh, just tell me yes or no, and it's not going to work well. So of course, you could add branches to handle those hedge cases. But you know how edge cases work, you know? The first one is free. The second one is cheap. The tenth is very expensive. And the hundredth is, uh, destroys the machine. OK, so at some point, uh, adding edge cases doesn't work. And um, putting constraints on a natural conversation is very difficult. So we need better ways to handle conversation. So that's. That's a, a conversation of flowcharts you don't want to have to deal with. OK? So we have two problems. First, we need a way, a simpler way to express 
and to design dialogue. And second, we need a way to, um, we need to have a system that will be able to deal with little variation from the script, you know. And that's uh, Raza has to offer. That is how you uh, design your conversation in Raza. So you don't program it. You don't write code for your conversational flow. You describe it with an example. The first example is very simple. Is I want to transfer $80 to John from my checking account. Then the bot say, OK, uh, do you transfer, do you confirm uh, your transfer, $80 to John from your checking account? Yes, I do. Then uh, the chatbot sends a transfer to the bank, and when he gets a response, he says, OK, the transfer went well. Can I do anything for you? Can I, can I do any, anything else for you today? So of course, act, all the actions here, they are code behind. So uh, action ask transfer confirm, there will be Python code that will do stuff, uh, deal with API, and so on. Uh, action submit transfer the same. Utter, well, it's just a print. Uh, and that's it. Another example. Uh, please send $80 to Cynthia. Um, yeah, OK, from which account? Uh, from checking, please. OK, so do you want to confirm $80 from checking to Cynthia? Yes, I do. And the transfer is executed. Another example. <coughs> OK, please send $100 to Welcome Hall Mission. OK, from which account? Huh. How much do I have on my account? Or you have uh, $200 on, on your account. Fr but from which account do you want to make your payment to uh, Welcome Hall Mission? Or from savings then? OK, so do you confirm your uh, $100 to payment to Welcome Home Mission? No, you know what? Uh, I'm going to give 150 and then etc. <coughs> OK, so you can give as much example as you want like this. And you have two things. You have memorization, so you can reproduce all examples as they are. And you have generalization. So it learns patterns from the examples and adapts to new dialogues to some extent. OK, so just for those who are curious um, on how it works, uh, you, have, uh, you define your own uh, Keras model. So here you see it's a simple RNN. For those who, are, who aren't familiar with that, it's uh, recurrent neural networks are a type of neural network that's adapted to uh, sequences. And a conversation is a sequence. And I'm going to show you a s an example. Uh, hmm. I wish I had three hands. Um, so on the right, I have all my training examples. So you see, I don't have that much examples. It's uh, 240 uh, lines only. So it's about 20 or 22 examples, I think. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to the bot. Um, yeah, bigger? No, I can't. <laughs> um, and uh, everybody can read? Yeah, more or less? Cool. OK, so that's the, the scenario uh, I showed you. And then I'm going to say, huh, how much on checking? Ooh. How much on savings? Ooh, champagne for everyone. And then I'm going to save from savings then. Um, and then I'm going to say, OK, you know what? They can live with only 150. 
And after all, I'm going to pay from my checking account. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I confirm. OK. So where is the magic? The magic is that in all those examples, and we're not going to read them one by one now, but if you're curious, you can see after, where, after and I'll show you. You will find examples where um, a user asks for its balance once between um, being asked from which accounts he wants to pay and confirming. You will have an examples where um, the user changes the amount once after the confirmation, but we'll, you will never have examples. Um, but there, there aren't examples where um, a user does exactly that. He asks twice the, the balance before confirming the source account, and he changes twice the amount, well, once the amount and once the, the source account before submitting the transfer. So it's not much, I admit that, but still, it was able to adapt to something new he has never seen before with only, uh, only about 22 examples. So that's it. Thank you very much. If you want to reach me, uh, I'm here. But uh, if I'm gone, you can uh, send me an email uh, at that address. If you're interested in uh, working with Raza, so please do have fun with it. And if you're interested in getting paid for working with Raza, let me know. Uh, I have a, a lot of projects, and I'm open to any arrangement, contract, uh, uh, part-time, etc. Thank you.